Yeah, thank you ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the channel again. As you all know, is uh, my take on it with Dr. Victor Basui. So today I'm going to be talking about um, what we call external hodiolum or styes as um, the name man will usually call it. Uh, I decided to take on this topic knowing how um, cosmetically disgusting it can be when you walk around with um, a sty on your eyes on your eyelid. Styes technically are not like um, styes are not like other conditions that you can cover up with your clothes or anything that you have. Unfortunately with styes there's nothing much uh, you really can't cover it up. It's just there and it's there. Uh, what is it that causes um, style or why is it that sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't? Well, styes are caused by bacteria. It's a gram-positive bacteria called the Staphylococcal aureus. It's a gram-positive um, bacteria. We all harbor this bacteria on our eyelashes. What happens is um, our immune system usually will um, subdue the bacteria so that we don't get um, styes, uh, we don't get infected with styes. So sometimes when the bacterial load becomes too much for the body immune system to handle or uh, the immune system is low, uh, the bacterial load might be uh, normal, but the body immune system is too low. Like when we are sick, we are stressed out, or maybe like uh, the elderly, the very old or the very young, whose uh, immune system are not as um, strong. Those are the people that usually will find the um, styes occurring frequently in. But there are also times when the body immune system is, is functioning normally, but the bacterial load is too much for the body immune system to suppress. In that case, what, ha um, what most people uh, should be doing, which they don't do, is um, a habit called uh, lead hygiene. Usually once in a month, you put Q-tip in baby shampoo and used to clean, your, uh, clean around your eyelashes. What that does is to reduce the bacterial load on the eyelashes. That way, your body immune system can suppress whatever is left, then you don't get uh, infected with styes. Uh, but there are some cases where this, the person that has it uh, uh, frequently will keep rubbing their eyes. They rub their eyes, they don't wash their hand, the next person does a handshake, touch their eyes, obviously you can get it. There are some times when in families you see it spread from one person to the next person to the next, and usually that's what um, happens. Uh, so usually what happens in families is that the, maybe the dad or the mom has it, or the child, any of the kids have it, have a habit of um, rubbing their eyes. They don't, uh, they don't wash their hands, and um, ended up uh, probably end up touching the other child's, uh, the other person's hands, or touching their eyes. Of course, what you've just done is uh, to transmit the bacteria from your end to the next, uh, to the next person, and that's how it usually spreads. But other than that, the same bacteria that causes dandruff, no matter how well you, even when you uh, finish taking a shower and you do a swab of your eyelid or eyelashes, you're definitely going to find uh, staph or rose bacteria in it. It's always there. We all, uh, we all carry it um, around. So there's no, uh, the, the thinking that uh, probably because you just, uh, you have a shower all the time, that helps. No. The same bacteria causes uh, dandruff. Think about it. If you don't, sh if you don't um, wash your hair with shampoo, no matter how well you do, you still uh, probably end up with uh, dandruff. So and it's the same, uh, the same thing with um, styes. What you want to do is to reduce the amount of bacterial load on your eyelashes from time to time. So even when your body immune system is low, at least you can still handle, the body can still uh, suppress uh, the bacteria that is uh, there. And that is the essence of having to do like a lead hygiene or the, uh, at least once a month. Put Q-tip in baby shampoo, used to clean your eyelashes. It goes a long way uh, to uh, prevent you from getting uh, styes. Uh, obviously, uh, at one point in time or the other, we must have all, uh, we have all had um, a sty. The worst thing you want to do is to think of um, squeezing it out which is what um, a lot of patients try to do. That's, the, that's asking for trouble. 
you don't want to squeeze it out at the same time you don't want to keep um, rubbing it the best thing to do is knowing that it's a bacterial infection the best thing to do is um, you need a hot compress and an antibiotic the hot compress when you do you apply two sessions of hot compress per day uh, about 10 to 15 minutes per session you put a clay cloth a thick cloth put a thick clay cloth in hot water uh, make sure it's, uh, uh, it's hot, but at the same time, check at the back of your palm to make sure it's not uh, too hot to burn you. Then apply, uh, apply the wet towel to your eyelid over the, uh, the eye with the sty. Um, when you do it, you only want, want to apply a little bit of pressure because the sty is an abscess filled, filled with um, pus. So it's an infection of the uh, meibomian gland, the, Zeiss, the gland of Zeiss. So what you want to do is to apply a little bit of pressure and heat to try to uh, get rid of that uh, abscess instead of trying to squeeze it or to burst it. Uh, a lot of patients will tell me that um, they've uh, tried different uh, uh, remedies that didn't work. Uh, usually when I ask, okay, what have you tried? Or I put salt in water and try to uh, soak my eyes in it. Or I put sugar in water and try to uh, soak my eyes in it. I obviously don't know where uh, that whole idea came from. I would think probably this is something that will pass from generation to generation. Salt in water is a um, saline solution. Saline does not have any bacteria, any bactericidal or bacteriostatic eff uh, effect that is going to take off uh, the bacterial infection. The only thing it can do, to the best of my knowledge, is to flush the eye, flush the, flush the bacteria, uh, try to flush the, flush the eyes and uh, reduce the bacteria load. But it does not have any antibiotic effect to actually deal with the bacteria that is, uh, that is there. You're using saline solution. Um, most people will tell you that it works, but the question, the question that I usually ask is, um, how do you know what the value, um, the ratio of salt to water that you need to use, or the ratio of sugar to water that you need to use, even if it works? So it's, uh, it's better to go with, uh, that's a hypothesis, because it's not a proven fact. It's better to go with the proven uh, test, or theory, which is uh, theoretically uh, the antibiotic that has been proven beyond reasonable doubt to be able to handle the uh, bacteria. So I think um, uh, a sty is different from a uh, chalazion. Chalazion, on the other hand, a sty you will know because um, it tends to be acute, which means a recent onset, and uh, it's tender, usually very tender to touch. Chalazion, on the other hand, has been there for months. So even if you press it, you don't feel anything. That's um, hardened. Chalazion has to be taken out by uh, excision or surgically removed, surgically drained. Uh, a sty, on the other hand, would, be, would have happened within um, a week to two. And um, so it's still uh, susceptible to uh, antibiotic and uh, hot compress. You can uh, actually use a hot compress and antibiotic to get rid of a sty. Chalazion, which has been there for a very long time, you, you, you hardly get anywhere with it. You're trying to um, do a hot compress and uh, antibiotic. So there are two different, they might look alike, but they are different. Uh, Chalazion, like I said, is uh, chronic, which means it's been there for a month or more than much more than that. And um, getting rid of it is usually by surgery, excision, or draining it. Uh, a sty is only within couple of, would have happened within a couple of days to a week maximum. So uh, you can do hot compress and um, antibiotic to get rid of it. So antibiotic, a hot compress, and lead hygiene. Extremely important. If you practice good lead hygiene, chances of you getting a sty is very slim. Once you find that you have a sty, the best thing to do is to go to your eye doctor or your family doctor, as the case may be, depending on which one is, um, uh, which one you can uh, assess uh, early enough. Because the earlier you start the treatment, the better your chances of getting rid of the, of getting rid of the infecting uh, bacterial organism quick. The longer it's been there, the longer, the, uh, the longer it will take to get rid of it, 
and the way, if one is not careful, it might end up uh, having to be the one that uh, you have to uh, surgically drain it. So the earlier the treatment is uh, implemented, the better it is. So uh, knowing the difference between a star and a chalazion may not be uh, in your own uh, uh, in your own department. So, but uh, 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 an eye care professional can easily tell the difference between um, between both. Then um, sometimes it, uh, it, it is not is it, what you think is a sty. Sometimes what you think is a sty may end up actually being a, not just a benign lesion, but something that is a cancerous. We've seen the cases of um, the squamous carcinoma on the on the eyelid. So, and um, this is cancerous. So it's um, it's not child's play. So that's why it's always good to go to your eye doctor, have them check it. I'm be sure of what it is. Then um, the, do the, the the doctor will probably guide you through the process. But if in case you're in a place where you can't get to the doctor, then um, hot compress antibiotic will usually uh, usually do it. There are times when the antibiotic uh, uh, when the antibiotic will need to be tailored to a particular microorganism if it's taking too long to to uh, to, to to manage. A practitioner will know when to draw the line. So thank you ladies and gentlemen, this is my little take on it. I hope um, we all learn one or two things from this and uh, avoid uh, the embarrassing situation of walking around with um, a star on our, on our eyelid or spreading it to others. So if you think you've learned one or two things from this video, please uh, share the video, uh, like it, comments are highly welcome like I always say. If you have anything to say, please put it in there. If you have questions to ask, I'll gladly answer them to the best of my knowledge. But um, I think we can do a lot more uh, by uh, preventing it rather than uh, trying to cure it. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is my take on it this week. Channel is uh, my take on it with Dr. Victor Basui. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please do. For those that have subscribed and continue to share our videos, we appreciate you all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a a wonderful week ahead. Thank you.